Okay. So um, what we're going to do, you guys are welcome to stay on here. If you are new, I'm going to do a very brief, but to the point, um, you're new, what's next, kind of a, a training to make sure that you feel like you're on top of things. And you guys are welcome to ask questions, even if you're not new, but you're like dialing back into your business or you need like a redo, reset, whatever, like I'm all in. So any questions that you have right off the rip, you're welcome to drop those in the comments. Okay, so you signed up, hurrah, congratulations. Um, if you are intending to do exclusively dabbling, right? Like I might sell a thing or two, I'm promoting my website, whatever. Um, we can definitely work with you sidebar. What I wanna talk about right now is I wanna to talk to those of you that are interested in doing parties and legitimate selling, okay? so. This is something that we did for years and because of COVID, it kind of fell to the wayside. And I think that that was necessary at the time, but a mistake to not go back to it. So as a new consultant or as someone who is restarting their business, it is absolutely imperative that you launch your business, you guys. Like, I cannot stress this to you enough. It's no different than if you were opening a restaurant, you would have a grand opening, right? Like, no matter what your business is, hair salon, tanning salon, doctor's office, like whatever it is, you're gonna have a grand opening, right? That's exactly what a launch party is. I even kind of like the word grand opening better. Maybe we'll change that wording. Sometimes I have a moment. Grand opening is awesome, yo. Right, isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah. Well, have we not used that for the last 15 years? I don't oh. know, but it's good. Okay. Okay. Sometimes we, we, we just have brainstorms that happen guys. It's the way that it works. Um, so my recommendation to you is a couple of things. One, if you're down with doing actual in-person parties, I want you to do both in-person and virtual. If you're only doing virtual, cool. You can do virtual, but if you're doing both sides, I want you to do both. Okay. So I personally think everybody should be, um, let me grab, I'm going to grab what I've got here and I'm going to show you what it is because I think everybody should have one. This is what I take. I, I use it here for my lives. And then I also take one to, um, my parties. Okay. So it's literally a little clamp. It clamps to a tabletop. It bends, it twists. It has the holder for the device. And then it has light here. And I mean, you can use the light or you can not, like it's entirely up to you. But I set up my phone to go live in the event for anyone who couldn't be there in person. And that encourages my hostesses to invite out of town um, sorority sisters, people that are in their family that live in a different state. Like don't limit it. People can shop with you from anywhere, right? And that way they're seeing you. And sometimes you're, I mean, every party will have two to five people that cancel because of sick kids, had to work late, car broke down, whatever. So we don't want them to miss out too. So they can still go back and watch, right? So it's a really, really, really super simple way to increase your exposure. And you just set it up to the side, I set mine up so I'm the only one on camera. So nobody has to worry about being seen if they're trying to be on the DL. I just want them to see me. And sometimes it's at a weird angle, like whatever. I just, I don't worry about it too much. I just want them to be able to hear and feel the vibe of things. You'll also book parties from people that are like, that's, I'm so bummed that I missed it. I wanna actually be able to touch and smell and taste all this stuff. I wanna do my own party. So really, really, really super fun to um, have both the in-person and virtual piece to this. Now, for your grand opening, you are both the partner and the hostess. So I really want you to keep it simple. It's smart if you have a bestie, a sister, a neighbor, whatever, that can come and kind of act as the hostess, make sure people have drinks and the snacks and all that stuff. So you can focus on being the partner. But it's also really important that you keep all of that stuff inexpensive and light because the more elaborate you make it, the harder it is to duplicate. And people will end up not booking because they're like, oh, I can't put out that big spread. I don't know how to cook. Like, or I don't have the money. 
I love when I roll in and I know that my hostess has listened to me. Too salty, too sweet, and nothing that's going to be finger food right now, right? Like I don't want them uh, 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 touching their mouth. I would rather them have a fork or like chips or whatever, like something super, super simple so they're not licking their fingers, right? Because COVID. Um, and um, I, I'm like, girl, go get your some like three buck chuck. Like it doesn't need to be anything expensive. I love a um, champagne punch where they go get like a cheap bottle of barefoot bubbly and mix it with soda or sherbet or whatever. It makes it a fun, you know, like pretty color. And it's super, super inexpensive to do, but everybody loves bubbles. So just a couple of different tips to make it like inexpensive as humanly possible. And you want to invite every bloody woman you know. Do not edit it. Do not say, I don't have room for everybody in my house. Girl, that's a great problem to have. You got more people than you have house. High friggin' five. I need you not to worry about that. People will stand, they'll sit on laps, they'll curl up on the floor. Like that's a great problem to have. But when you edit who you invite to these things, if somebody finds out they weren't invited, you guys, I promise you, you think you were trying not to offend them because it's something naughty. You have offended them because they've been left out. I made that mistake. Don't do it. It's not a good decision. Give them first right of refusal. If they don't want to come, they won't come. But chances are they're going to be nosy, if nothing else, and everybody loves free booze and free food. So invite them and have everybody come, okay? Now, what's really smart is actually doing not just that one party, but actually an encore of that. So that let's say you did that on a Thursday night, right? And you're going to have people that are like, oh, I'm so bummed. I can't come. We got soccer practice. I'm out of town, blah, blah, whatever. You can be like, it's totally fine. I'm actually doing an encore opening on um, Saturday at noon come have a boozy brunch with me. And they're like, oh, that works perfect. Great. Now you've got her in a secondary event. It gives you the opportunity to move people that can't go to one to another. And it gives you the opportunity to do your demo twice in rapid succession, because this is how you're going to make it stick in your brain. And you're going to have a bigger order to place when you place your order on COO. So you have the potential to order six packs and get bigger discounts, which is great. So it's just a really smart way to kind of kick things off. Here's what I'm going to tell you. There will be many of you who are like, I don't know the products well enough. I don't know what ingredient is it that makes Body Boost work. I don't understand how O works. Girl, I need you to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Really and truly, you can study for years and still not remember it because you will get up there like a deer in the headlight and panic. And you'll be like, uh, uh. don't sweat it. You're new. The people coming to these parties know that you're new, you guys. Like they don't expect you to be Celine Dion when really you're just singing karaoke. You know what I'm saying? Like they understand. If you're nervous, you want to put together some note cards. Cool. I personally, when I um, started, I had a catalog and I did this again when we got bought in 2014. So I did it in 2006 for my first few parties. And then again, when I had a whole new product line because we got acquired by Pure Romance from our previous company, I had to start all over again with brand new products. I had my catalog and I used post-it notes. I live by post-it notes and I would pick out, I numbered it. I'm like, number one, meaning that's the first product I'm going to show. And I stuck it next to Coochie in there so that I could go, uh-huh, okay. So our next product is Coochie Shave Cream, right? So like I knew what the scents were because it was right here. It was on my post-it note. And then I would flip to number two and I was there and I was holding it up so that they could look in their own catalog. Like it's totally fine to have cue cards, you guys. Dana Barish has been in for almost 20 years and still carries cue cards because she recognizes that she's not going to remember all the ingredients that go into rise and grind. I have no idea what's in that oil. It, it just works, right? But she's got them all written down in case somebody's curious about it. So it's completely fine to have cue cards for your first party. Done is better than perfect. Cool? Okay. Now, when it comes to products at a party, I'm going to suggest to you that you do not show more than 20 products at any given party. And you're going to be tempted because you love them all. And you're like, but if I don't show it, they won't buy it. 
there is a very fine line between I've given them lots of choices for them to consider versus I've shown them so much, their brain is overwhelmed and now they're confused and a confused mind says no. I watched this happen for the first six months of my business, you guys. I then cut my demo. I was showing like 60 products. I cut it down by two thirds, really changed the time of my party and my sales doubled because people were, they'll, they'll buy what you show you guys, whatever you're showing. And they're going to be like, okay, cool. She says this is the best one. Then this is what I'm going to get. Right. So don't, it makes it easier for you too. If you're like, I only have to know a little bit about 20 things, as opposed to knowing a little bit or a lot about 60 or 70 products, like the product line is big, you guys. So you don't have to show it all. I promise. So pick like mm, 12 or 13 mild and the rest toys or bondage. Okay. Keep it simple, sister. And you also want to make sure that you're keeping the toys simple and that you're showing one dual action, one clitoral, one couple, one anal, one C ring, like keep it simple. If you show main attraction and sure thing, you better be ready to explain to them why one is better than another. Why is one $60 more expensive than another? A, a seasoned consultant has no problem explaining that. New people, maybe not. So keep it simple for yourself and just show one from each category, okay? I think there was a question over here. Uh, so for every home party that you have, do you still make a Facebook group? Um, yes, Mia, every party that I do, they have a group. I stopped using events just because they are so friggin' uncooperative. My last party, my hostess preemptively created uh, an event and it was not cooperative. The group is so much easier, so much easier. Plus you can tag everybody. Okay, so um, you're showing your 20 products. Uh, you wanna make sure that you are also playing a booking game because the easiest place to book more parties is at a party. They're there, they love the products. Their hostess is getting a bunch of free stuff, right? They're earning things. Everybody's got a budget, why not treat them? So somewhere I have, where did I put them? My pile of boo bags, I have envelopes somewhere, hold on. They're hot pink, how can they vanish? They're hot. <laughs> This is also something that I will share with you. Just because I run a big ass business does not mean that I am not the hot mess express, you guys. I definitely am. And my clients embrace that. I have vibrators everywhere, you guys. When I say everywhere, like, oh, tra -la, 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 la I have a model clitoris. I have a random womanizer. Might be my own that I use at my desk. Don't judge. <laughs> no idea where these things went and i just use heather them. yeah is it is it terrible that i i have a full clitoris model sitting right here with me too <laughs> <laughs> not terrible completely normal so yeah. i'm just going to show you the actual envelope because i have okay so i got pink envelopes i got them on amazon you can use plain white envelopes you guys i mean like keep it simple sister i'm all about being frugal but i want to i want you to have five of them okay Five, and you're going to put a post-it note in there. Like here's a post-it note from one of mine. I can find, I can find what goes in it, but I can't find the damn envelope. Uh, this says free body boost. So when they pick that envelope, that's what their hostess gift is going to be. Okay. So each of my envelopes, you can number them or you can be fun. You can put a dirty word on there, like suck, kiss, lick, blow, smooch, and whatever. Um, but you're going to hold them up at the end of the party and say, listen, I know you guys have some serious wish lists going and that's completely normal because this stuff is fun. So you have three options tonight. One, shop your face off, treat yourself. This is like relationship insurance, whether it's with yourself or a partner, doesn't matter, but I want you to get everything that you love. Now, if you're balling on a budget, I respect that. So your second option tonight is to buy what you cannot live without. You're gonna hook up your hostess for feeding you food and booze. And then you are gonna be the one that gets to pick one of my naughty envelopes. And you're going to be the next girls night hostess because inside is a free gift for you for your party. And then your third option, if you watch tonight and you're like, this is literally the funnest side gig ever. You're absolutely right. 
It is the funnest job ever. I do get paid to party and I have total control over my schedule. So if you're curious about that, talk to me, put a little star at the top of your wish list because that will indicate to me that you want some information on what it's like to be a pure romance partner. No obligation, but I'll make sure you get everything that you need. That's the three options that I give them at the end of a party. And that's typed out somewhere. We'll have to bump that post. Um, but those envelopes, they, you can, as soon as somebody picks one, and it's fun for you to kind of plant that person, like ask your hostess before the party, which one of your guests is the party girl? Who's the girl most likely to book a party? So that you can be chatting her up beforehand and say, I have a fun little envelope for you at the end. So make sure that you get to me, right? All it takes is one to break the ice. When she does that, everybody else will be like, I want one, wait, I want an envelope. Is there more envelopes? And here's what I'm gonna tell you. Even if not a single person in the middle of that demonstration picks an envelope, I need you to take them into the shopping room with you. And you're gonna ask every single person, which envelope did you want for your free hostess gift? Not, do you wanna book a party? Which envelope did you want? I know they did, you were fun and they like these products. So assume the sale, assume the booking, you guys. Your goal is to book at least three parties from every party, taking into consideration that at least one will cancel. And don't beat yourself up when that happens, you guys. Like people's lives change, sometimes they're drunk, whatever. Like you have to assume that at least 20 to 25% of your parties will cancel or reschedule. So you wanna stack the deck and make sure you have extra, okay? Cool. Questions, who's got questions on any of that? <clears throat> I, I so hardly, I mean, so badly think that we need to make this um, grand opening parties. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's all that's swam around in my head for the last 10 minutes since you said that. Can you um, pull together some generic cover photos for your yep. romance grand opening? That'd be great. Yep. We're going to make that a thing, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yo. <sighs> okay, so here's what else I'm going to tell you. For those that are all virtual or you're both, website orders are where it's at, you guys. The minute you sign up, you have a personal website, you can start promoting it and selling on it. And that is easy money. You literally do nothing. The warehouse processes it. They process the payment. They ship the stuff. They send the confirmation email. You simply contact the client and thank them for their business. Tell them how much you appreciate them. And then you're going to follow up a couple of weeks later and just make sure that everything is going well with their stuff. You get the commission off you go to the rest of your life. Like it's a no brainer. Today was a uh, commission payment day. Did anybody get a commission payment? I did. $239 of cash showed up in that account. Yahtzee. What else? Who got, who got one? Mia got one. How much was it? My I did. Was 300 bucks. Nice. Cat City. Carrie, how much was yours? I think mine was like $62 and it was from an order from yesterday. Oh, isn't that fun? Yahtzee, Donna, how much was yours? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I got the email notification, but I've been working on the other stuff today. So it's, you've been it's busy. Little, it's cool. There's just money rolling in. You yeah, got so much money rolling in, in you've been paying yeah. attention. Yeah. Last week mine was $17 and 60 cents. Like it's just free money, you guys. It's free, easy last money. Week mine was so, 25. I do know last week because I was in there for right. that. Right. So I mean, like. This is for me, I'm like, this is supplemental, man. It's just extra cash that rolls into my account without me having to do anything. So this is why corporate offers these deals. And you can see the coming week's deals ahead of time. So you can plan this stuff, you guys, like stack the deck, but there's nothing wrong with you promoting weekly deals. Do not feel like you're being salesy. Do not feel like you're being pushy. You're literally offering them a limited time offer. Like sometimes it's going to be a pay week and they can take advantage of it. And sometimes it can't. Sometimes they're going to be interested in the toy. And sometimes it's going to be a lotion that they want. Like, you don't know. All you're doing is offering it to them. There is, that's your job. For I, I, it kills me when some people are like, I just feel like it's being very aggressive. Is it? Because you're now in sales. Your job is to sell stuff. So you're not actually doing your job if you're not offering them this opportunity. 
I'm going to tell you that I would be mad. I'll just use an example. So I um, just placed a pampered chef order. I worked with the same pampered chef lady for like 15 years. I love her. She's adorable. But she didn't do a birthday party in September. But another girl from my old hometown did. And she was like, hey, it's your birthday. Would you like to participate in this? I've got some deals going. I'm like, I don't know. You can put me in the group. Cool. I'll look. And something that I've wanted for I don't even know how long was on deal. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'll buy that mandolin. Great, right? I literally haven't talked to that woman in years. But I sure did place a $125 order with her. So she did the right thing. She did her job. She offered me the opportunity. I took it. Some other people didn't. It's your job to offer this stuff to people. If you don't, someone else will. And you're going to be real annoyed. Have you ever had somebody you look up and you're like, why that girl friends with, with, with my sister? Well, how'd that person become friends with my partner? Because she's shopping with her, y'all. So I'm not saying this is not cutthroat. There's plenty of business to go around. But if it's your cousin, she should be shopping with you, right? It's your neighbor. It's your church friend. Like, if they don't know they can shop with you, that's your fault. So I'm going to encourage you to get past the I'm nervous about feeling pushy. It's not pushy. You're simply offering her the information and a link. If she takes it, cool. If she doesn't, move on. You've lost nothing but 30 seconds of time to put up a post. Easy. Um, can All I right. ask you a question about something that is not pure romance related, however it is to the conversation you just had? Sure. Do you remember the plate that you bought for the microwave that makes chips and the yes. thin mandolin? Okay, did that come from Pampered Chef too? Yes. They don't have it anymore. And I'm really sad because I really want it. And um, I'll bet you a nickel. If you Google it, it'll be um, as seen on TV. There's there. They make that. Okay. Microwave chip maker. All right, then. Thanks. <laughs> and that mandolin is a badass. I made French yeah, fries. Is. I made all the things. I was, I I was know. Cutting up. My kids are lucky. I did not stick their hand in that thing. I'm like, if it's loose, we're cutting it up. Let's go. Like yeah. I got real excited. about. No, it, it was so good. Um, I actually had just asked Meredy um, the other day on, on Facebook if they still had that plate in the mandolin. I was like, I, it was the thing that I drooled over the most at Heather's house. And she had a lot of gadgets. But I love the, cooking. So I have all the kitchen yeah. gadgets. Yeah, I love the gadgets. Yeah, girl. That I'm telling you, that mandolin is a badass. Um, anyway, yeah. so Mia asked, what tips would you give to someone who is comfortable speaking about the business in person, but has anxiety about posting and asking for the party via social media? Okay. So... Before I can give a tip about this, it's really important that you get into the psychology of this. And for anybody that doesn't realize this, 95% of business is psychology. Some people are like, I'm just not a salesperson. That simply means that you're not interested in what makes people tick mentally. That's it. It doesn't mean that you can't sell. It means that you are not interested in the psychology behind their decisions, because that's all we're doing. We are making sure that we are either providing them pleasure or we're fixing a pain in their life because that's how we make decisions. Does it give us pleasure? Does it fix a pain? That's it. I want you to think back to every decision that you made today, what to dress, what to eat, what time to get up. Like it's all because of, I either have to do this or a pain will happen, or it's going to do something that's going to increase my pleasure. Every decision we make is based on that. So my question for you is if you're uptight about talking on social media, what is it you're afraid of? What is the end game that you're worried about? Does that make sense? It does. So is this a question for you or for a team member? Uh, both end. Okay. So I would really like, I would dissect that like really and truly like what's the worst thing that could happen? And some people are very glib about it and they're like, well, I mean, they tell me no, or they block me or whatever. Like it's for some, eight it's, I could lose my job. I could, you know, cause a hullabaloo for my husband's job. Like for some people, there's a legitimate concern, but that honestly is the really small minority. The vast majority of what stops people from doing this is their concern about what the perception of somebody or somebody's online will be. What are people going to think and say about me? Does this hit home for anybody? It does. 
However, but again, at the same time, when I'm in person, it's like, whatever, this is what I do. You need this. I'm not sure. I don't know how to get you past that then, because for yeah. me, hiding behind a computer is like, it takes no courage to, mm-hmm. to post shit online because <laughs> you can be like, delete instantaneously, right? Like, yeah. who cares? Walking up to somebody and having a conversation with them for a lot of people actually takes a whole lot more courage. But for you, I would, I mean, really and truly, like, what is the worst that's going to happen if you do this? What is the downside? That Once you find the answer to that, that's how you start working through it. If you don't have the answer to that or you're not willing to answer that, and honestly, then you're kind of going to be stuck. But some of it is um, not fear of failure. It's fear of success. What if I post this and somebody actually says yes? And I don't know what I'm doing or I tell them the wrong thing, right? Like there's a whole lot of things that can stop people. So if that's the case, then what do you need to learn or what skill do you need to practice so that when you do succeed, you're not afraid of it. It does just come off and roll off your back, right? Like it, you just, it requires you to be honest with yourself really and truly be honest. And I want you to know every partner experiences hesitation at some point in their business. There is no one who is a hundred percent not afraid ever. Like that doesn't exist. What I find is that there are different levels of fear and one fear outweighs the other, right? I'm afraid of not being able to pay my bills. So I am not afraid of being told no, because I will eventually get a yes. That's the difference for me. I am not afraid of someone saying, oh, that those products are not for me because I know in my head that she's ignorant, bless her soul. Because if she bathes, my products are for her, right? Like I know she has something. So I'm not worried about her ignorance because either I'm gonna get the opportunity to school her and educate her and change her life, or she's gonna go right back to her ignorant life and I'm gonna move on blissfully enjoying everything that I know, right? Like she doesn't pay my bills. She's not in charge of my life. So what does it matter? And if she's a stranger, PS, if this is a stranger, she's still a stranger. Strangers are strangers until they're friends, period. Now, can I say something to Mia? Of course. Please. So I've been sitting here watching your smile. It's you, you glow. You have a beautiful smile. Thank the you. only thing people are going to see with you online is that smile and it's going to draw them in because it made me hit unmute to want to talk to you. Now, if you get as comfortable posting as you are talking now and talking within this group and doing your stuff live in front of people, can you imagine where you will be? Like you're a total unstoppable badass. You just yes. got to do it. Yes to everything she just said. Um, Can I give you a little insider tip that sounds so silly, but it really, really works? Two things you can do. Um, We used to do this when we were only making phone calls. So like people couldn't even see us, but I still do it now. So if I need to get hype, like when I teach one of those classes, like the BJ class or the anal class or whatever, like I, I have to go into it high energy, right? Because it makes a difference in how the information is relayed. So generally I put on a really slutty thong and some sort of arousal cream on my my clitoris so that I'm like kind of twitchy and getting my groove on because I can't sit still. I'm going to tell you, it sounds real silly. It's a Jedi mind trick that you will have a naughty, naughty secret that nobody else will know, but it's going to give you this like different vibe that makes people go, whatever it is she had for breakfast, I want it. Right. I'm (laughs) in for that. I love it. (laughs) Go get you a crotchless thong girl. (laughs) It's so true. (laughs) I'm serious. I mean, if you really want to get rowdy, go ahead and put some Benoit balls up there while you're talking. And I mean, you'll be clenching and bobbing and weaving. Like it'll get real rowdy. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You'll be smiling then, won't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Amanda said, I live in a very small town. So yeah, maybe a little. So here's what I'm going to tell you, Amanda. 
the size of your town has absolutely no bearing on your business because you're not going to stay in your town to run a big business. You can't. I don't care if you live in a big town, you're still going to go outside of your zip code in order to run a business. You have to. If you were a realtor, again, if you were a restaurateur, like whatever business you're running, you cannot stay in your backyard and expect to actually run a business. That's a hobby. So don't sweat it. I Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And that comment was actually more for um, people who were Nervous. leery of putting yeah. things online and what people may think of their business. And I, I, you know, I, I did not I do, don't I didn't care, do a party but... in my hometown of Warrington, Virginia for the first like four years of my business, unless I hosted it because there were four or five other consultants that were like running the show in that town. When I first started, it did not stop me one bit. I went all over Northern Virginia and had a business twice as big as any of theirs within a year. So it's about hustle. hustle so how did you, how did you do that? What was your first step? Did you target more of your friends that were further away on purpose or? The very first thing that I did was I put out an email because remember there was no social media and no texting and no smartphones back then. I'm a big fan of the phone. You guys, the phone is a cash register. Um, I put out an email to my mom's group that I was in. I was a member of Mom's Club International. The, I went to a club in um, Bristow, Virginia, because I didn't even have one in Warrington. And I was like, hey, some of you guys know, because you were at my party this past weekend, that um, you know I hosted a slumber party. That's what it was called back then. And I loved it so much that I'm actually becoming a consultant. And so I have to do practice parties so I would love to hook you up with some fun extra freebies. I don't even remember what I offered, as a, but it was not a lot because I was so poor. Um, but I had seven different moms from that mom's club. Two of them I didn't even know, but they were like, we heard about your party and we didn't get invited. So we're going to go ahead and host our own. Seven women stepped up and hosted parties for me right out the rip. And then it spidered out from there. Now, I also, in my first six months of business, did a bridal show. Um, I was with four other women and I paid, I don't know, $150 or so for my four hour shift at a bridal show to book parties with total strangers, many of whom from that very first show are still my client 15 years later. Um, and then about, it must've been eight months in, cause then it was right around Christmas. I did a vendor show at, um, a local community center, Com completely mild, obviously, but I also booked parties there. So uh, it was a combination of me playing booking games, right? So that I did the hostess coaching. I made sure that people didn't just invite their friends. They encouraged their friends to bring friends because that's how you get outside of a circle. So let's say you've got seven of your friends coming. You incentivize them to bring at least one guest with them. My incentive has always been bring a friend, get a free gift, bring three friends that shop with me and get a free toy. So there will be girls that roll in and they're like, I brought my entourage with me. And I'm very honest with them. I'm like, the bigger your friends orders, the better your toy. Like, I don't tell them that it's going to be one in particular. At a minimum, they're going to get a silver bullet from me. It cost me $7. But I've given away main attractions to people that brought $1,000 of guests with them. So, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. I haven't thought about that in a long time. I did consistently my first eight months in business, one party every week for eight months, every single week. And then my second year in business, I was like, I definitely can do more than this. And that's when I started doing two parties a week. And I maintained that schedule um, for like 12 years. Yeah, um, Meg Ryan's orgasm. Let's see. You can absolutely still like, even if you've been in business for a while, still ask for the practice party. I just did it the other day and I have a bunch on my calendar and I've been in over a year absolutely. because we've got new stuff guys yes. all the time. So just say, Hey, I got new stuff. I need to practice. Yes, absolutely. I love that. There people are always willing to help when you ask for help. Women naturally want to step up. We're just nurturers that way. Right? So don't be afraid to use those words. It does not sound desperate. It does not sound sad. I like to ask for guinea pigs. I'm like, I need seven guinea pigs to try out a new party format. Who's in? I did this 
every time we had a launch uh, for a number of years. Then when we went virtual, I did it again. Um, I do it every single summer when I go from a regular party to an eight is great party where I'm only showing eight products because I want it to be a 20 minute party. Like you can, you can do that a gazillion times. People love, love, love to try something new. Yep. Any other questions about that? I want to keep it really simple tonight and respect your time. Uh, but I mean, it, all good things come from parties, you guys, and it does not matter whether it's virtual or in home, like there's hours of training on how to do a party. We have a document, how to do a rock star demo that takes you step by step by step by step what an actual party looks like. So that's available in the group page. I mean, really and truly just about any resource you could possibly imagine that you want probably already exists. So don't be afraid to ask. One last question, Heather. Sure. Um, when you have a hostess that cancels, um, how long would you suggest waiting before you reach back out to them to try and reschedule? So it really depends on why she's canceling. And there is a difference between a cancellation and a reschedule. So somebody comes to me and says, um, hey, listen, you know, I need, I can't have the party on whenever it is. If it's like weeks in advance, right? Like, let's say she booked the party this, this past Saturday night and then it's Monday and she's like, hey, you know, the date that I chose, it's just not going to work. No problem. I would love to compare calendars and see if we can't pick another date for you to make sure that you get that gift that was in your envelope. If she's blowing it off, I don't push it. Like I want an enthusiastic hostess. I'm not going to beg for a party, right? If she's like, I'm really sorry, my schedule's just screwed up, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Can we pick another date? Then we pick another date. If this is two days before a party or the day before a party and she bails on me, if she had like a full head count, the, the invite was going, like people are coming, I'm going to get on the phone with her and be like, what's going on? Why, why is this happening? You have a house full of people that thought they were coming to this. Find out what it is, right? If there's some sort of personal issue, you have to respect that. And I don't, I don't, I try not to get off the phone with her without picking another date. If she's just blowing it off, I don't rebook her. I'll be honest with you. Like that, that's disrespectful of my time. And it's disrespectful of her friends that thought they were coming. Now, here's what I'm gonna tell you. The vast majority of the time when someone cancels, it's going to be because there's no one coming. The invite is dead. People are not responding. And frankly, you should have seen that. If you're paying attention and no one is responding, it's not a party. I don't, when people send out an invite, if I don't have at least five to seven yeses, it's not a party. It's not happening. It doesn't mean you can't have a party with two or three people, but you got to believe what they're showing you, right? So if she waits that long to pull the plug, she's going to do it again. So I will always double book her. If she cancels on me last minute, but she's like, can I please pick another date? Uh, first of all, if I gave her a prime day, like a Friday or Saturday, I'm like, no problem. I'm sorry, I don't have any other Fridays or Saturdays open, but I can certainly talk to you about a Wednesday or Thursday, okay? So I'm gonna give her a day that she may or may not want. Um, but let's say she's like, oh, whatever your next Friday is, I'll take it. I'm like, cool, it's 90 days from now, right? I'll book her and I'm still gonna book someone else over top of her because the likelihood that she will cancel again is very high. If they both hold, you then get to cherry pick your party and decide which one you want to do and gift the other one to a sister. It's good karma. It's a good problem to have, but I Make always sense. double book a canceler. Always. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Any other questions, girls? Those of you that were in the um, booking boot camp this past week, I would love your feedback. I think they're actually putting together an exit survey right now. But um, if there's anything in particular that really connected with you or maybe a skill that you were surprised that worked or whatever, then I would love to, to hear that. How in the heck do you get people to show up to a party during the week? Listen, sister friend, go to any bar on a weeknight. There's people out partying. They will absolutely party. People will go to a happy hour. They need to have a good reason and it needs to be short. Happy hour is happy hour. It's not happy hours for seven hours, right? So um, I, when people are like, I have to have a Saturday, I'm like, tell me why. 
Well, because everybody's just busy. I'm busy. I'm like, you think people aren't busy on a Saturday? I am busy on Saturdays. I'm trying to do grocery shopping and soccer and all the things. And half the time I'm traveling. And so is everyone else. But nobody has anything fun to do on a Tuesday, right? So let's do a toy Tuesday. A happy hour is so easy. Your friends can come straight from work. They'll be there with you for an hour. I'll do a 20 minute quickie demo. That's my eight is great demo. They shop and they're home for dinner. Easy. It's you being confident and holding your ground. I don't work weekends. I just don't. I did for a long time. I missed a lot of shit with my family and I hated it. So I decided a few years ago, I'm like, no, I'm out. I'm not doing this. So I might let a long time hostess that I know is going to have a banger once a month do a Saturday, but in general, no, my, my weekends are mine. You have to do what works for your family, but when you book a weeknight party, you will book weeknight parties. If I do a Wednesday party, I am never booking a weekend from a weeknight ever, 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 never. Um, the other thing you can do is ask them, do you play, do you play Bunko or you go to a book club or any of that kind of stuff? Because if they're a mom, chances are they've got something that they do, right? Yeah, I play Bunko. What day of the week is Bunko? They're like, Monday? Cool. Let's, let's combine Bunko and a toy party. Because if they can go to Bunko on a Monday, they can have a toy party on a Monday. Promise. Um, for your Wednesday parties, do you still start post my party for virtual parties? It's Sunday through Friday with a live on Wednesday repeatedly. That's, that's how my virtual parties run. So show. Um, are we going, are we able to go back and watch the stuff from last week? I was burned out. Yeah. The, the group is there. So they're all numbered day one, day two, day three, and each day has three posts. So you can absolutely go back and look at everything in perpetuity. It's all there to make sure that you have access to it. Yep. Do you think email is still a good way to update on sales? Yes, B, I just today put together my client newsletter. Um, I was waiting on one little image from Donna for a Cocktoberfest, so that's gonna go out in the morning. But I still, every single month, send at least one email. It's the newsletter from Media Center because it's already ready. Like I add a couple of things that are personal because I like to customize it a little, but you don't even have to do that if you don't want to. You can literally go boop and send to everybody that's in your email. So yes, I believe that email is magical. When I do flash sales, I hit them with text, email, Facebook messenger, posting multiple times. So every single time there will be people that don't see a single notification on Facebook they didn't get my text message for whatever reason, but by God, they got an email and they respond. You need help with the media center? There's a great YouTube video that will show you how to use the media center. It's super, super simple. Yeah, I just have this block that it's gonna be hard to get it up and running. Mm -mm. As long as you have contacts in COO, you're good. If your contacts are not in COO, the media center is useless to you. Okay. If your contacts are elsewhere, let's say um, you have a Google form, right? You mm -hmm. can either upload that stuff to COO, which is a little more complicated, or you can use like MailChimp or Constant Contact. There's plenty of email things that you can send out. And frankly, you know, you can send out a hundred emails at a time in Gmail. Just make sure you blind copy them so that it's um, they don't have the emails accessible to everybody. But there's a, a ton of different ways that you can send out emails completely free. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's really about getting in front of them again. That's what matters, right? Like you want them every month to see that you are in business. We have new products. Here's our current catalog link. Like let them know that there's something happening in your business and that you're actually still in business. Like one in four people are still in direct sales after 90 days. That means 75% of people don't make it 90 days in the direct sales business, mostly because they don't pull the trigger. So when you've been in business six months, nine months, a year, multiple years, like they take notice of that. It creates longevity that makes them comfortable. So you want them to know you're in business and a quick email every month is brilliant. Brenda, it was nice to see you, honey. Congrats on the new place. Anything else? Any other questions? 
do you send your um your newsletter like right at the beginning of the month or do you wait until like girl it know? really depends on how together i am i mean you <laughs> saw me digging for shit right yes. <laughs> sometimes i'm on top of it sometimes it's a shit show like i'm super jazzed it's not the 15th yet and it's going out tomorrow so um <laughs> But I do always send it out at the beginning of the week. Whenever yeah. I'm doing it, it's going to go out. That's yeah. just, I watch my um, my analytics in there mm -hmm. and consistently a 7 a.m. hit time, particularly on Mondays and Tuesdays, get more openings than anything else for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, other questions? This if you guys... Like Lisa, I love that Lisa was like, you yes, know, I love your face. That's it for me. Oh, Good you're so sweet. <laughs> love you. Um, Lisa was brave and said, you know, I, uh, the, the week got away from me last week. I, I need to go back and look at all that stuff. You guys for real, it's cool. It's completely fine to realize I wanted to do something and it got away from me. And unless it's somehow time sensitive, like it's past Halloween, boo bags are probably not going to be a thing anymore, right? Unless it's that kind of thing, you can always go back and start it on your own. What it requires is self-discipline to actually go do it. Because I'm here to tell you the content from that booking boot camp was legit. The things that were taught, the skills that were shared work. And not for one, for the vast majority. It's a matter of actually following directions. If you can follow directions, it's going to make a difference. Ooh, Lisa has an in-home party on Halloween. That's fun. Is it a costume party? I think she's typing. Um, I was trying to unmute. I couldn't hit the right button. Uh, we haven't quite decided that part of it yet. We're still in the early planning stages of it. Um, by Friday, we hope to have everything ironed out. But the friend that I'm having it with, she is totally awesome. She's been wanting a party all summer, but just time constraints. She's like, that's the only day I have. I said, that's perfect. <laughs> because that's with the new job fun. and everything. So super fun be, yeah good just make sure you do it early enough in the day so that if people have kids they don't feel like they have to pick it's at two o'clock in the afternoon perfect that's perfect um a really super way to do it if you're like i don't know about the whole costume thing is just wigs and wine tell everybody to wear their favorite wig you can literally go to five below and get a wig at this point like super easy to do and Mia's got a costume party. Fun! That's so fun. I'm working a um, trunk or treat at the high school on um, the 29th. So I'm hoping to meet some moms. And I have never dressed up for Halloween before. What? <laughs> never. Girl, you've got a Catwoman vibe like nobody I know. That is absolutely what I would write. Am I right? Hell yes, Mia, <laughs> how the hell are we friends, Matt? Yeah, 100%. Girlfriend, talk that to me on the side. Way. I'll hook you up. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Okay, so Heather and Donna were on the uh, were on the phone with me earlier today and they started talking about costumes because we have a sale on our website. It's like tease me, please me or something like that and it's a whip, tickle and whip with the cuffs and a blindfold and I was like, "Man, how hot would that be of a costume with sheer beauty with the sculpting slip on top?" with a blindfold and the cuffs and the whip yes oh and check oh, out the God. big mama does it surprise anyone that i have a random mermaid wig <laughs> within arm's reach <laughs> not at all <laughs> i my office is just a mishmash of nonsense you guys oh, but this goodness. is the kind of shit that i bust out when i go live with my clients i'm like so who's excited about seeing some nonsense Heather's in the house with some shenanigans like it makes them stop and watch I look like an idiot and I don't care because then they're throwing money at me. I'll take all your it. money and I'll sit here with my womanizer at my desk oh my gosh <laughs> at some point you get over it and you're like it's good I got like this is like highly flammable it's kind of <laughs> Why do you look like Frenchie with that wig on right now? Yeah. <laughs> look at me, I'm Sandra D. 
Oh gosh. Oh, beauty school dropout. That is exactly Total what I beauty just school dropout. Beauty school dropout. <laughs> so good. So good, you guys. It's so oh, good. It is so good. So, so fun. Fun. really, like you all get to a point. You really do get to a point where you just kick it all out the window, and you're like, "WTF? I'm funny as hell, and I know it." <laughs> like, I mean, I'm trapped I, I down here. Think I, about me like online. I don't. My office is like a casino. There's no window. There's no clock. I have no <laughs> idea if the sun is up or down. Like, there, Adrian's just pumping oxygen in here for me to be able to keep selling the dillies. Like, it doesn't <sighs> I have my magic wand here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Bippity That's boppity from retreat, dildo. isn't it? Dude, I love my wand. Yeah. Is that so, the one you made at retreat? Uh, it is yes mm-hmm. yes ma'am i have such random crap on this desk oh you guys it's about fun if you're not having fun with your business it's time to step back and say what could i do that's going to make me laugh because if it's going to make you laugh it's going to make them laugh and when they laugh they love you yep that's it i'm definitely I think i might dress like a hillbilly now. i think when i do my penis live i'm going to put on a fake mustache and it's going to be like oh, random, random hill. Oh my God, that's time. so Oh my good. God, Heather, you have to go get yeah. the giant mustache that they have at the dollar store. Oh. See, I don't want a giant mustache. I want the bad porn stash. The like, yeah, yeah, I'm no, a 15 they have year old one boy. That, like, that just has up, like man. lip pubes. That's so what basically they what you have is you need Adrian to grow that, on mus- that terrible mustache <laughs> that he grew, that porn stash, and then have him shave it and just put it on adhesive for you he has a full mountain man beard right now because he was in west virginia for three months it's so unattractive can i tell you how much i appreciate his his post to you like, oh my god I love him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you guys want to understand my marriage just go look at what my husband posted for our anniversary oh gosh uh it's yeah i'm so headed hard. there right now. also yeah, i need to like- see this mountain man beard Dude, he looks like the you're doing the the Applebee's TikTok dance. Sorry. <laughs> he he got in the car. I was listening to a country station yesterday, and he got in the car, and that song was on, and he was like, "What the hell is this? This song is great." I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> fancy. I love this. Fancy he said, like "You that. still a little fancy though, <laughs> right?" <laughs> The best part is I haven't walked into an Applebee's in like 20 years. I'm like, when was the last time I went into a damn Applebee's, you joker? I love For those that have never met my husband, he is a party waiting to happen. (laughs) He's so good. I need to figure out a reason to go live with him again. Yeah. Maybe we'll have dueling mustaches. I don't know. Did you get your clothes out of your dad's room because there was storks in there? Oh, <laughs> Lisa. Lisa's unmuted. All right, girls. Um, we have clearly gone off topic, which is fine. <laughs> Does anybody have any other My questions bad. or any uh, like random stuff they want to share? Look at Sarah's um, screensaver. That's so cute. That is super cute, Sarah. Sarah, you look cute in a towel on your head. I do not. I, I don't. It's not an attractive look for me. Me either. <laughs> Yeah, it was, those are just, yeah, I ripped that up on Canva. (laughs) Oh, I know what's coming. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Hope it doesn't get me in trouble. Um, The face line, the face line is supposed to be to me by Friday. Wow. Is that for all board and President's Club or just board? Residence Club, I don't know about, but board okay. and senior I'm pretty board, sure yes. it's both. They said we would be opening it at the same time. Okay. Yeah, I know um, senior board gets both of them, both the sensitive and the regular. So um, I need to look at the ingredients to figure out which one I'm going to be using first, but I'm super jazzed to get and some Canada's before and after. getting it, which is so exciting. Yeah, they are. What, what? It's going to be so good. So anyway, the reason I tell you this is because they're getting it to us so that we can get some testimonials going so that when it drops for the clients, you guys can use our testimonials to push this out hard. So by the end of the month, before close of business, um, we're supposed to have it in everybody's hands. The 27th pre-orders, 27th. That's what the slide Stuff happens with bottling, so don't get crazy. 
I know, but that's what they release. In, they said, in theory, the 27th. So don't Did they get confirm upset. from Canada or no? They confirmed Canada, yes. Oh, finally. Thank you. Yes. Um, but I'm, I'm telling you, you guys, this port issue in Los Angeles, I mean, there's, there's challenges. So nobody get their panties yeah, in a wad. Even Kimberly happens. confirmed that, that we're getting it hundred percent on our big call at the beginning of the month. Yeah. All right, guys, I, um, I'm going to let you get back to your life. So thank you for joining us. Um, maybe tag a sister or two in the stream so that they can see the recognition and hear all the fun stuff. You guys asked some really, really, really good questions. So I hope that was helpful. And um, go out there and book some parties, man. Like at a minimum, do your own. I promise you, you rip that Band-Aid off and you just do it. You're going to feel so much better about your business and it'll get the ball rolling. So just And from all of us here in Canada to all of you guys, happy Thanksgiving from us to you guys on Columbus slash uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. I did not Thank know you. that Canada Happy celebrated Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, we do. In October, we spread out our turkey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. Night, y'all.